The Myavi is a, a three-dimensional interactive trait space program. It works like Chaco, but for 3D plots. I don't know a great deal about Myavi except that it's really cool. I know that it, it's, it wraps the visualization toolkit under a trait space wrapper, so you're sort of getting the visualization toolkit and the traits formalism, and it's highly compatible with numerical Python and scientific Python. Um, and again, I can demonstrate my Avi with examples better than I can explain it. So I'm going to show a few basic my Avi examples, which is going to show you objects that my Avi generates. Um, so let's start with the magnetic field lines. These, let's see. So what this is going to do is it's going to just generate some magnetic field lines I think for a, a solenoid. I'm not quite sure. And it's just going to demonstrate some basic features of my of Myavi. Now, anytime you build a Myavi object, it's going to be wrapped in this scene model. And this has some nice features. So Rob can scroll around the object. He can um, change the views by clicking on aspects of the toolbar. You can see that he can change what axis he's looking in, or he can get an isometric view. Um, can also project the uh, the axis to the user so you can see where X, Y, and Z are defined. Um, he can save the object, no problem. He can also make it full screen. It's uh, this one, yeah. And these are just some basic features of any any object that you represent in this program. Uh, there are some advanced. Advanced features built into into this toolbar. If you click on the, the gear icon, you're going to start playing with the lights and the, the TVTK properties. And I don't know all that much about this, but like for example, um, you can see how Rob can control these lights to really customize these aspects of the scene. And these are things that you're never going to have to define yourself in the source code. These sort of just work out of the box. Uh, my obvious is a very sophisticated program. I really don't. I'm just scratching the surface with my knowledge of it, but uh, it, it's it's very nice for generating these these objects. Now let's look at the uh, the advanced version. Now, like I said, this is built on top of traits, so it can be useful to interact with it, just like Chaco. Um, interactions are easy, and there's a good mapping between the data space and the visualization. <coughs> Now you can tell that this is a more complicated object, but sort of the same functionality. Now what we've done here is we've put, uh, they've put this scalar cut plane, which is a built-in Myavi object, to cut along the vector field. So as, as Rob does a cut, you can see that the projection of that cross-section in the vector field is updated in real time. And this is a pretty, pretty advanced uh, function for how simple the, the code is to write. Uh, the scalar cut plane object sort of comes with my Avi, so you can use it in your programs easily. If he drags the arrows, he can change the um, the direction of which along which it cuts, and uh, you can see a fairly sophisticated object being represented here. is is pretty easy. This could be used for a lot of different applications. <coughs> All right, let's also look at the Wigner. For nuclear, for nuclear physics physicists out there, for for training for pedagogical purposes, you know this can show you how Myavi is good at visualizing basic objects, you know, for teaching or classroom environment. Um, so what they're showing here is the the Wigner function for different, uh, I guess, different photons in a box. I really don't know what's going on, but. But it's nice, you know, you have the text there, and it's good for demonstrations or presentations. And let's look at the Julia set. This is just a cool, a cool object, which is plotting uh, Julia fractal. And um, it really shows you how some of these views can be very sophisticated. And again, this is just scratching the surface. But it's pretty cool. It's like looking down a chasm and as the same functionality as those other objects that I showed you. All right. All right. Because my Avi is built on top of traits, just like in Chaco, I'm able to interact with the, pro with, the uh, 
with the program using the traits just like you saw in all my other examples. So this is an example to uh, design coils and you see the same features. You have your scalar cut plane and what it's doing is I guess it's superimposing the magnetic field from these coils and on the left you can see that I have the pipeline. So whenever you build a Myavi, a Myavi object, this pipeline keeps track of all your objects in a very nice format. You can see the coils, each of their objects. You can see that, how they're built, and, and their services and other aspects. So if you want to customize them, it's very easy to do it using the, the tree or the pipeline that's shown there. Um, so let's, let's select uh, the second coil. Yeah. So now Rob can go down and you can see that there's some traits that are also being presented to the user. So if Rob changes the position trait from 0 to 0.5, you can see that, let's make it 0.1, you can see that the coil is moving. So that trait is representing the position of this object in the Myavi scene and everything updates automatically. Um, and this is what we mean by it's being built on top of traits. So again, you can see this is a very sophisticated application, um, and it all kind of just works out of the box. And it's, it's not, I want to say simple, but it's, it's tractable for non-computer scientists to use this. And I don't have much time to go into my obby because I don't know it very well, but you can start to see how sophisticated this application can be. This is another demo to show more interactivity between Maya V using traits. Um, so what you see is there's two scenes and one of them there's a three-dimensional sphere and the other one there is the projection of the sphere on a two-dimensional plane and Rob can move the sphere around and he can pick regions on the sphere and when he picks them wherever that region he picked is going to be updated on the projection of the plane. And I can imagine a program like this could be useful to a lot of different fields it really shows you how having advanced visualization tools could help you in your research. If you didn't have the tools, how would you even know what you were doing here? The last concept that I'm going to introduce is the idea of a plugin. And in NThought, their plugin development framework is called Envisage, and it uses some other packages. Uh, I, should, I should preface that I don't know very much about plugins, so I might be destroying this, but in, in a colloquial sense, a plugin is sort of like a software or a program that is made, is built to work with a bigger framework of software. Uh, we know that, for example, Flash is a plugin to Firefox, meaning Adobe builds its Flash programs and then they work within Firefox. Now, the same thing exists in Ensage, uh, I'm sorry, in Enthought and this is Envisage. So Envisage is a framework that if you can build plugins that's, that are supported by Envisage, you get these extra tools and functionality that you don't have to put into your programs. Uh, a couple different applications in, or different frameworks exist uh, in Envisage, such as the workbench and the task, and basically it works like this. If you can design uh, a, like any of the programs that I showed you before, which are trait objects, then you can adapt them with minimal effort to turn them into, to fit them, to make them plugins that fit into the workbench or the task or other Envisage frameworks. And then you'll get extra functionality without ever having to open the source code to your object. So I'm going to show you an example of that. So a lot of MyV objects in the demos are already built with a plugin in mind. I'm not sure if this is the workbench or the task plugin, but basically what happened is there's an, an object that any of, that anyone that uses Mavi could write over here on the right. So this is a three-dimensional object. It has the toolbar. It has the functionality, the zooming. It's a standalone object that works in Mavi. Now to put it into a plugin, you have to use some adaptation, which you can find in the tutorials by Enthought. But what you get by putting in an application are some of these other features. Like underneath, you have a code editor. Now, the code editor, if you're already if you're using a plugin you kind of can get for free. It's already built into the framework. So if a code editor is useful to whatever you're building, you just have to call on it. You know, I don't ever have to write the code editor myself because it's part of the Envisage application. Another nice thing is the idea of a workspace. So if Rob goes to File, 
he can start a new workspace by calling a new scene. And this is sort of just going to run the exact same program in parallel. Um, it's not populating because we have a lot of things running, but essentially you could have multiple workspaces. There's nice functionality to um, customize the views. There's nice functionality for saving the entire workspace, loading the workspace. Um, you can see that Rob could save the scene as it is. And all of these things, this whole menu and the file menu, for example, is we never wrote ourselves. This comes by designing plugins, and that's just part of the Workbench application. So uh, the perspectives is another thing. Um, if you go to View, we can, uh, we can, for example, do a new perspective. And this sort of allows us to customize how we want the view to be this pop-up, the idea of a perspective, all of this is part of the Envisage framework. It's not something that we have to build. So just by adapting our objects to be a plugin, we get all of this functionality uh, essentially for free. It's again more power that's given to you just by using the tool set. I'm not going to say much about this idea of blocks context, but there are other other projects that Enthought works on as well. Um, and they have some nice, some nice functionality. Now, I don't use these very well, so I can't give you a good description of it. Anyone else that does a demo that is, is familiar with these tools could probably really impress you. Uh, but, for example, blocks are just objects that are really uh, suited for dependency analysis. You know, if you have a model or you're doing simulations where there's a very well-defined uh, pattern between variables, you can really take advantage of blocks to optimize your code as well as play with them. Uh, you see on the bottom I have a screenshot from the block canvas application which actually is taking in objects from a, a function and you can draw arrows to actually um, play with them. If, uh, if a model for example went A, B, C I can draw arrows to go from A to B to C and I can execute that code or I could do A, C to B just by doing arrows. So. It really helps you um, with a lot of nice features. Like again, I would recommend that you guys look for the some of the presentations on the subject. I can't give you much more about block canvas or blocks context, but I'm just trying to point out that what I showed you is by no means the the summary of everything. There's there's a way a whole lot more to be discovered with this package. So I really would suggest using it for um, for any of your needs. Um, so in conclusion, I just want I hope I showed you that application computing is much more simplified using these tool suites and um, I would suggest most anybody that's familiar with Python to start learning these tools because it's really going to extend what you can do without extending without much difficulty.